All right, folks, so we're stumbling out the gate. Uh, this is the wild gyrations of sound and fury continue. But what exactly are they signifying? Joining me now, Market Gage Group Managing Director Michelle Snyder, along with Strategic Wealth Partners Luke Lloyd. All right, so the message of the market, right, not just today, but the last couple of weeks, Michelle, I, I mean, we do see resolve, but we also see greater volatility. What are we, what is the market telling us? I think the market is telling us to prepare for somewhat of a stagnating economy, the possibility, obviously, of some higher interest rates and the possibility of more inflation. And that's why we're seeing the, 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 the safety plays, like long bonds doing well, consumer staples, utilities, those are all doing well. Some tech, but not all tech. And it really is showing the divide here with the Russells, the small caps, the retail sector, even the financial sector. They're all floundering here. And that's really, as we always talk about, the inside of the economy. Mm -hmm. And that's where the danger is lying right now. Luke? Yeah, I think the message the market's telling you is that if you follow every single headline throughout the news, you're going to go absolutely insane. I mean, that's why 90% of traders who day trade or swing trade the market lose money. If you're part of the 10%, it's all about sticking to a strategy. Those people, those people that make money in the market day trading and swing trading have a strategy. So it's all about constantly upgrading your portfolio, taking money from the winners, selling the losers quickly, and redeploying the profits into stocks with a good growth story, a good management team, and something that's more important than ever, a reasonable valuation so that redeployment the hashtag buy on dips you're my man for that but last time you were on you seem a little hesitant uh, are you getting closer to pouncing right now I want to clarify you know I caution not buying the dip on the S&P 500 not because I think there will be a sell-off but because I think it's becoming flawed with over 30% of the S&P 500 being made up by eight names. I mean, I think there's a ton of value right now outside of those names that you wouldn't get exposure to if you just bought the index, right? So a lot of the names, even some larger names, are down in bear markets over 20%. You know, I think you should always be looking to hashtag buy the dip when stocks fall into your lap. And one of those stocks is Vicor, ticker VICR. The stock's down 30% from the peak, and their manufacturing technology is all about helping convert power the most effective and cost-efficient way. It gets in with data centers, EVs, artificial intelligence, and even a future growth opportunity in crypto, and you were just talking about the metaverse. That gets me excited. So a few years ago, I forgot what year it was, but Motor Trend had named Tesla the car of the year. This is when they were first trying to, you know, build that reputation. So this morning, Michelle, uh, Motor Trend uh, had really great news for Rivian, and I think even Lucent. They're soaring today. Also, Harley's doing something with an electric motorcycle. It's now the time to start pouncing on some of these EV trades. Which one would be the best? Well, Rivian reports this week, so I reports would wait what? for that at this point. <laughs> earnings. Exactly. <laughs> earnings on the metaverse. <laughs> so Ford would probably be my go-to right now, and possibly even Tesla, even though they didn't make Car of the Year. Didn't Elon Musk just make Man of the Year on Time magazine? So certainly we haven't forgotten about him, and it's really heading into some major support here at around 937. So if that holds, gets back to 970, I would go with what's always been the leader in the EV space for years now. Let's talk about this Fed uh, meeting. Uh, I wanted to get everyone's thoughts this show, and certainly you, you, you too as well. Uh, do, you, do you start to buy before the FOMC wraps up? I'm thinking it could be anticlimactic. I'll go back to you, Michelle, and then ask you, Luke. Well, I tend to agree with you, Charles. I think that we all at this point expect that they're going to say exactly what they've been saying, possibility of faster taper, possibility of rates rising quicker than the end of 2022. So unless there's a surprise, it's in the market. Mm -hmm. I would never not buy something that's really set up well because of an FOMC meeting, because they happen every month. That would actually keep you from being in the market. And generally, you have a 24-hour reaction, and then things go back to whatever the relative norm is at the time. Great point. Luke? I think you can buy either before or after the meeting. I mean, all eyes are on the Fed right now. I actually saw a study recently that if you ask the average American if they cared more about COVID or inflation, they would answer inflation. So after seeing the 6.8% inflation print and the Fed finally admitting inflation isn't transitory, I think it's likely, likely they remain hawkish until we see the inflation come down. But that being said, if some of these good growth names sell off because of that, it, I think in general, it's hashtag buy the dip scenario for most of those names. All right. Two of the best. Michelle, Luke, thank you both very much. You know,